Hey there, my friends, Mike here. Once again, we have some fantastic questions coming into the Articulate Storyline forums, and one of our awesome Storyline users wants to create the following type of course. On the first screen, they want the learner to choose either audio or no audio. It's really cool. Here's the tricky part. If the learner chooses audio, they want the slides to automatically have the audio play, and when the audio is done on each slide, it automatically advances to the next slide. So it's really sort of a set it and forget it type of modality where I click audio and I sit back and enjoy the show. Now on the flip side, if the learner chooses no audio, then what should happen is that on each slide, no audio is going to play. The learner is going to read the transcript in the notes pane. And in addition to the audio not playing, the slides should not auto advance. The learner needs to choose to the next button or click the next button to have the course continue. So two seemingly conflicting course design models here in terms of the navigation. However, it's really easy to set this up in Storyline using a true-false variable and some triggers. So let's go take a look at how we set this up. So the first thing that we're going to do is indeed create a true-false variable. I'm going to call mine audio. No, that's a true false variable. There we go. And I'm going to set it to an initial value of true. We click OK. Now, audio. If the learner selects the audio button, what I'm going to do is simply add a trigger to jump to the next slide. I'm going to leave that true false variable as true. In my mind, I think true. The audio is going to play. However, if the user or the learner chooses no audio, then what should happen is that variable should adjust to a value of false. So I'm going to adjust that audio variable to a value of false. In my mind, I think false. The audio should not play. And also, I'm going to create one more trigger for that button to jump to the next slide as well. So here we have the learner choosing audio, and in which case the variable remains true, or no audio, in which case the variable switches to false. In either case, they're both going to jump to this slide right here, where you will see I have an audio file already recorded and inserted. Now, here's where our triggers are going to come in, and you'll want to do this on each slide. What you're going to do is create a trigger that says, play media, sound number one, so the audio file, when the timeline starts. Now I'm going to pause here and close this out just to show you something kind of cool that you may not have noticed before. When you target an audio file in the timeline, you see this waveform? Watch it change. It changes to recorded. This means that it's being targeted here. And what we're going to do is we're going to target this with a condition. So play this media when the timeline starts on the condition that the variable, that audio variable, is equal to a value of true. So if the learner back here chooses audio, we started, remember, that true-false variable as true, it will remain true, they'll jump down to this slide, and the media will play when the timeline starts because that variable is equal to true. If the learner chooses no audio, the audio variable changes to false, and now when we get to this slide, this trigger is not going to happen because the condition of that variable being true is not being met. So that's how we get audio to not play or to play on these slides. So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to add one more trigger here that says to jump to the next slide when this media ends. So when the media completes. We'll jump to the next slide and that'll happen automatically. But once again, the cool thing about this is that this trigger is not going to fire unless that audio file plays. So this trigger is predicated upon this one up here. And now we also have this built-in jump to the next slide. When the user clicks the next button, that's all you need. So if the learner chooses no audio, the variable happens to be false. None of this happens here because this is all predicated upon the variable being true. And then the slide will just wait for the learner to jump to the next slide by clicking the next button. Now, one other cool thing, you can always have this change midstream through the course, maybe even on your slide master, but on each slide, you could have a button that switches that variable back. Okay, so I have a button, maybe an audio button that says switch the variable back to true, and then the audio will begin playing on each of these slides. So there you have it, folks. That's how you can get a couple of different design, navigation designs in your course, audio, no audio, using a true-false variable and some triggers. Take care.